Josh. Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a top five, so far at least, of my favorite super shoes I've tested out in 2020. I've been lucky to try out a number of the super shoes released from the running shoe manufacturers this year. The Carbon Champions. So I've drawn up a top five taking into account my experiences so far in each of the shoes. Only looking at tempo and above paces, you know this meandering around, it's just not really going to tell us anything. Been testing the shoes at race paces for me, so for 5k, I think my PR is just under 20 minutes, 41 minutes for the 10k, and my half marathon target pace is around about 6 minutes 50 per mile, trying to get in just under the hour and a half mark at the moment I'm just above it. So which of these high-end race shoes has helped me perform at my best in training? thus far. I'm going to aim to return to this top five towards the end of the year so a few of the other shoes that you don't see today will get a second bite of the cherry. If your favourite one isn't here, don't worry. These are only my opinions based on my experiences at this point. Before we get to it though, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, do hit that button and click the bell for notifications of when I launch those new videos. Number five. It's quite exciting this. Number five is the Socony Endorphin Pro. So after about 60 miles, this shoe still feels really great underfoot. The midsole has kept its rigidity, or I did find that the endorphin speed did lose some of that rigid feel. Didn't feel quite so snappy. This one still feels pretty much the same as the day I took it out the box and smelled the strange weed killer like smell. Still there, garden center vibes. Wearing this one though is much more exciting than a forced trip to the garden centre. After a few initial doubts I had in the shoe and some settling down of the upper, it did take a little while before that settled down and lockdown stayed consistent across the run. I think you're left with a very stable underfoot platform here with the Power Run PB midsole material and a wonderfully supple upper. I tend to rub olive oil into mine just to make it that little bit more inviting i'm joking now i don't do that don't do that to your endorphin pro that's going to ruin them i think that more densely packed pbax midsole foam that Socony have used here does make for a much more stable ride akin to the triumph 17 or 18 been using that shoe recently for commuting just walking to work it's very comfortable but of course the power run pb is a hell of a lot lighter than the power run plus featured in the trial as i say the carbon plate has kept the rigidity of the midsole over time and i think the differences between this and the endorphin speed have become more apparent with more miles and more time i think the pro seems to be durable enough as a daily trainer certainly Socony indicate that you can use it for that no doubt that will prove popular with runners who want a top level running shoe but are on more of a budget. I think the only real letdown for me here in the Endorphin Pro is that slightly slippery outsole in wet conditions. You better watch out. So, number five is the Socony Endorphin Pro. Shoe number four. Alpha Fly, next percent. The Alpha Fly, shock horror. How can Ed Bud have included it at only number four? I've put it here mainly due to cost. I don't think this one's a huge improvement on what we've had before but it's certainly a greater cost most expensive of the super shoes so far it's quite hard to say that i think this one's turned out to be something of a acquired taste not everybody likes it i think that some people bought the tempo next percent and hadn't tried this shoe and they were really confused by the feel of that and there's some similarities here. I think it's certainly an improvement stability wise underfoot with that wider landing platform. I think it's gonna benefit people over greater distances like the marathon rather than the half marathon. You've got more weight there as well. 259 grams in my UK size 11 or 9.1 ounces. So it puts it pretty much on par weight wise with the Socony Endorphin Pro, 0.1 of an ounce in it. I did find it interesting that when people did manage to get their hands on this quite elusive shoe they found it to be quite drastically different than the next percent especially in the forefoot area underfoot it really is quite a different feeling and of course the upper is drastically different this sort of new version of flyknit here isn't for everybody's taste but i really enjoyed it i think i enjoy the upper here more than the upper in the next percent actually still not absolutely sure about vapor weave 
shoe just kind of feels a bit like a plastic bag over my foot. I think that Atom Knit Upper is certainly an improvement, but at another £20, already an extremely steep price for the next percent, this one's even more. It certainly rocks on foot. And time trial wise, over the half marathon, a few months back, I managed to clock my best time. That could be down to improvement in fitness and all the training that I've been doing, but it was kind of effortless in this shoe. That side, we got 20 grams extra weight here than the next percent. It's like a pound per gram. I think it's just too costly for me to put it any higher in my top five right now. I mean, it's a Tony Stark slab of technology here, just everywhere you look. So the Alpha Fly takes position number four. Shoe number three, Adidas Adi Zero Pro. A shoe with a supremely fitting upper even offers additional eyelets to customize the lacing. You want that tailored lockdown feel over the top of your foot. Totally tremendous Adidas. Cellar mesh is a really great upper material. It's really won me over. I think it's a bit of a revelation against some of the overly roomy uppers in some of the other shoes, namely the Meta Racer. It's just far too big in the toe box. And the same can be said, I think, for the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. This one's just a supreme lesson in upper fit. The midsole here in the Light Strike caged boost with that particularly flexible plate, still allowing the relevant muscles to move around and operate and do what they're supposed to do. It's like Adidas still want you to improve in terms of your body and the things to work as intended, but still assist you a little bit. More like an augmentation, I suppose. I still felt some real drive from the plate. I know others didn't, but it just seemed to work really well for my foot strike, my running gait, everything. It just melts away this shoe for me whenever I use it. A beautiful mixture of responsive underfoot feel, but also a very stable kind of feel underfoot too. The outsole is one of the supreme champions as well of the super shoes of 2020 with the continental rubber in the forefoot, quick strike here in the back, along with a little Addy wear as well. Really is tremendous the outsole on the Addy Zero Pro. I'd suggest one of the letdowns here is a slightly greater weight. 274 grams or 9.7 ounces for my UK size 11 and a half. I always size up a half in Adidas shoes just to give me the right fit. This one's perfect. Again, a really effortless feel at my close to half marathon target pace. Really enjoyed this one. Always leaves the legs feeling fresh and ready to go once again. Up until earlier on today, I think I've moved the shoes around about three or four times into different positions. Uh, it was really tough to actually come up with this top five list. I've tried to be as fair and unbiased as I possibly can. So I did have this shoe at the top, but I think I've detected its major weakness now. And thus for me, it just falls below to position number two. So shoe number two is the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. I mean, this has all the properties that I hoped for in New Balance's main racing shoe. I mean, the excellent midsole containing that carbon plate, similar to the Fuel Cell TC from earlier this year. I'm not really sure it's any different at all. Some people say it's a different type of fuel cell. I'm not convinced about that. A brilliantly fitting, but very comfortable upper. I think a vastly improved upper compared to the TC. Via feeling of the Beacon 1 upper, actually, it does feel a little bit like that. It really is very similar. That tongue is absolutely perfect in length and beautifully padded and a sublime outsole. Tremendous grip and ground contact, even in very wet weather. Alas, that is one element where this shoe has a bit of a weakness. I did take this one out in some extremely wet weather today over the 10 mile distance and this thing absolutely soaks up water like there's no tomorrow. When it's dried out, this thing weighs about 238 grams. That's about 8.4 ounces in my UK size 11 and a half. When I got back from the run today, I thought, hey, let's uh, weigh the shoe. It did seem a little heavier, and it was. 303 grams now, so 10.7 ounces. This thing's taken on over two ounces of moisture and it really does feel quite heavy still, even some hours later. I don't know where exactly, I think possibly here in the heel. It's just absolutely saturated still, so a big negative. Certainly one of the best out of the box experiences I've had with a shoe. There's not a huge amount to fault here, apart from that sponge-like nature of the upper. 
certainly a stiff price though, £209, it's not far behind uh, some of the other super shoes like the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent. I was kind of lucky, he managed to grab it at £200 but with some club discount as well, so down to £179 which is a little easier to swallow. Ooh. I suggest the cushioned ride here in the RC Elite is close to the Next Percent or the Vaporfly 4%. It's near that Zoom X feel, but it's the upper that really makes it happen and makes it close in terms of performance. It's certainly a more traditional feeling upper than the Vapor Weave in the Next Percent. I think really the upper is only bettered perhaps by the Seller Mesh in the Adidas Adi Zero Pro. Again, the padding as well in the Adidas Adi Zero Pro tongue is really great. Similar story here. I think this is a more propulsive and exhilarating ride than the slightly denser foam that's in the Endorphin Pro. That outsole grip's similar to the Adidas Adi Zero Pro, and certainly it's very close in terms of where I was gonna position this one in my top five. I know there's a couple of other carbon plate shoes to be released, but certainly this is one of the best that I've tried. So, what is the number one super shoe that I've tested out so far? I guess I could have some sort of drum roll here. Maybe you can do that at home. You can tap on something or make some funny sounds. Vaporfly, Next Percent. Earlier in the year, I picked up this Ekaden version of the Next Percent. I still feel this is probably the king of the carbon plate shoes. I mean, exceptional lightness, unmatched reputation as well. Even at the 5K distance, you see people opting for this one all the time. People love the cushion, they love the comfort, and I mean, it's still ridiculously hard to get hold of. They sell out within minutes every time they become available. You even see them commanding some high prices on resale as well. I was really lucky to get this pair. I got a half size up here from the initial pair I got and I felt that this was absolutely spot on in terms of size. Just a little more length in the shoe and didn't crush my feet up against the front of the Vapor Weave. Certainly the Hakone edition is a really incredible colorway and this one again really sold out quickly. I did actually get to use this in anger in a race back in February, a quite hilly and undulating half marathon. It's a bit windy that day, I remember. I produced a good effort that day in the next percent, close to my half marathon personal best, regardless of the fact that it was extremely hilly. Even on some very wet training efforts, this one still doesn't suck up that water. It really does have a slight advantage over the RC from that aspect. Still comes in slightly lighter than the Fuel Cell RC Elite. Same sizes there, both 11 and a half, and this is a gram lighter. I'm not the biggest fan of the upper, but it does what it needs to do. It doesn't soak up any water, it doesn't get heavier, and you've got a slightly wider landing platform there. At 240 pounds, the next percent still is very expensive, but I feel that it's still the king. It's one beautiful looking shoe too. That's my top five. What do you make of that, guys? I've tried to be as honest and down the line with my views, just talking from experience. What do you think of my top five? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments. A quick musical interlude. I'm not sure why I picked it out, but recently I've been running listening to Elvis. Mainly his live greatest hits, which is now by my grabbed a fair few years ago now, which has versions which all seem to be from his Vegas period. So all these kind of rocket fueled versions of some of his rock hits and then some really beautiful ballads actually. It's a really strange mixture. I think a lot of those shows were cabaret type shows, so he's probably trying to produce a really good mix of material for the people that have come along to listen to him. The intro alone actually with Blue Suede Shoes is just bonkers. You get a real feel of actually being there. You could have been eating some fries and, I don't know, honey-drenched burgers with banana and listening to Elvis wearing his all-in-one. Polk Salad Annie actually is really great. It's got that rock feel. Everyone knows Suspicious Minds from this period. He did some really great versions of that. We used to do the Kung Fu moves as well. I love it. Burn in Love is a killer track. Really great tune. Elvis just sort of lifts everyone up with that one. Almost like a conductor. And I really love American Trilogy as well. That's a really, really beautiful song. I'm a big Elvis fan. I always love Elvis. And the live stuff's really awesome too. And it's nice to remember him from a period where he was still really fit and healthy as well. 
knocking out these live performances. His voice sounds superb. Go and check it out. Elvis, the live greatest hits. That's about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the very end. If you haven't done so already, please do be sure to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications below. Give this video a thumbs up like. It really does help the channel out. And you can also help the channel by sharing this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.